So, remember when the Greeks and the Romans had those gods that the people worshipped, right? They feared them, they loved them, it was their source of entertainment as well. Well, I know that there are people nowadays who see today's superheroes as the new incarnation of those gods. Some literally are those gods. But the difference is, is that, at least today, we recognize that those are fictional beings. At least I thought we did. We worship these dudes. We flock to the theater. We collect their memorabilia, thus idolizing them. We practically tithe more than our 10% as we give them all of our money. And like religious zealots, boy are their arguments on these fictional beings as if they were real gods. So, as a member of the Church of Marvel, and as we celebrate our 10 year anniversary to this cult, there's pretty much two parts of this video that I wanna cover and they, they kinda answer the same question. And that is, what's next? and why. Now, this has been my theory for the longest time. We all know that this is part one of the war. We know Doctor Strange saw his millions of possibilities and he gave up the stone because, you know, that's what's gotta happen in the one where they do win. And it's obvious that the ones who didn't get raptured up like Nick Cage are the OG Avengers. It's, it's the ones that we thought were going to die that actually stayed. And I keep getting sent a bunch of these pics from Avengers 4 where it looks like they will be traveling back in time to 2012 and getting some more shawarma, maybe signing a deal with the X-Men. And look, even Deadpool is going to be there since he's already on set to help rewrite the time. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Photoshop can be tricky, but whether it be Captain Marvel who comes in to help save the day, Adam Warlock, those time traveling looking badges that they have on them, they'll find a way to bring back all our fallen heroes because they got sequels coming up. Of course, that doesn't mean that when Avengers 4 comes that there's still not going to be some heroes who do die, that we're going to go back to the theater and not cry, that there's not going to be these new storylines that they do try. But if you know this channel, there's one thing that we cover here, and that is the why like Amora. Now hear me out. Obviously, parenting is always going to be involved in any story that you got because I mean, we we all come out of a mama. But what I've noticed is that these dudes and dudettes, it's always been about them being the children dealing with their parents. You know, some of these guys are in their 30s, even 40s, and they've yet to be a parent because they still don't have kids. They're still struggling with their own past. And to me, seeing that, you know, 19 movies, and that's always been the shift between our characters in the past that I feel that's been done on purpose. And now that shift is going to shift. I mean, look at Tony and the shadow of his parents that he's always been under after he took over the company, right? Thor wanting to live up to his dad's legacy only to realize he was a liar who locked up his daughter in hell after using her. Gamora had a couple of issues with her stepdad. Star-Lord's dad killed his mom. Spider-Man can't even keep an uncle. And even some of the villains deal with that crisis between their creators. And it hasn't been until recently when we realized that Hawkeye had a secret family who he retired for, which we know some of them probably vanished, so he's got a Brett Favre and come back, that that shift between our heroes in the past has shifted between our heroes in the future. Look at Tony taking on a young Spidey under his wing to foreshadow that dream he's been having about himself having a kid, which, you know, hearing him talk to Potts about that dream and then Potts saying, no, bro, you, you need to come back because I don't think that all heroes have to die when they leave. Some can have a family and retire. Even Thanos, the big bad of the universe, who after getting what he finally wanted and snapping his fingers, the first thing he sees is baby Gamora who asks him, was it worth it? You ever ask somebody a question like, oh, how are you doing? Or hey, how did that go? And they go, oh, I guess it was, oh, you, you already answered how it was, right? Like this man had this whole plan, he has killed dozens if not hundreds of planets, literally just killed trillions of people. This is this has been his life's mission. And then at the end, that's the first thing that comes to his mind. He loves Gamora. I'm pretty sure he's gonna regret losing her. I wanna change things. See, I think that's one of the aspects that's helped out a bunch of other franchises and that's why they last as long as they have, seeing their legacies continue through their kids and they're presented to a new generation. And I've always preferred this, you know, new material over prequels because even with the last jedi love it or hate it what they strive to do is break down the hype over what we consider to be an almighty legend and then you open the doors so that anyone can become a jedi so that anyone can become a hero so all those who we consider invincible mighty incredible freaking embodiment of america they too have to leave a legacy because they won't always be around cinematically 
And that's why I see this shift happening because they've always been so focused on the past, but at some point they're going to become history. Then they got to, they got to wonder, are they just going to repeat it or are they going to change it? All of the corruption, accidents, lies, betrayal that left a bunch of broken people who literally gathered together in leather and call themselves the Avengers. So as they become history, I don't really think that the question is going to be around who dies or who doesn't die, how they die, whether they retire. Obviously, we're intrigued for that stuff, but it's going to be more on what they pass on, who's going to take their place. And know in Marvel, not that they're going to break the fourth wall or anything, but I know that they're really thriving for that message of the audience being the hero. Because at one point, these guys were nobodies, right? They're characters. They were broken people who built themselves up to become icons just because of their will to act. At one point, these were characters who were considered so weird that in real life, if you were reading them in school, you would be made fun of. Nerd! And now they're breaking global box office records with every new movie. Y'all used to bully the damn kids who read these comics growing up. And now you're the first in line opening weekend to see to see Earth's wealthiest heroes. And I think that alone is a part of the shift, right? And I do think that they're going to be focusing on these heroes, the ones that we idolize now, the icons, as being the parents to this next generation of heroes. How they'll change the past. How they will literally go back and correct those mistakes as they time travel in the next one. But I know that there are people who see these as being big, dumb franchises, and they are. But I still think they're special. You watch them with your family, and years from now, when you have kids or grandkids, you'll probably rewatch it with them and experience it all over. You recognize that what made them heroes wasn't really ever their powers or features, since you can strip those away. It was never about where they're from. It was never about them being pretty enough to be adored. But what made them heroes was them being willing to help others. And anyone can do that. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Curious to know your thoughts on it down below. You know, all Avengers out now until until the next one comes out. But I think it's gonna be very interesting. I definitely think that's going to be the shift. I'm focusing on this new generation. I mean, just look at this picture right here, right? Where you got Captain Marvel right up in the front with Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. practically tells people what's gonna happen in Marvel. So to put her up in the front, to finally have that like female hero that isn't, you know, a side character per se, to have her up in the front, I think that's a part of the shift as well to show a uh, strong female lead up in the uh, up right in center as she comes to like save the day probably in the next one but i'm curious to know your thoughts definitely let me know down below in the comment section post malone video tomorrow as well as uh, recognizing that if civil war causes a shift freaking infinity war needs to tear up everything else